Almost there live, and we're live into Facebook, into the Leverage community. Welcome, everybody. I've got the CEO of Virtue Desk with me, my friend, Pavel. What's up, buddy? Hey, what's going on, brother? Nice to see you. Long time no see. Yeah, it's only been a week, man, I think. Yeah. <laughs> it feels much longer, though, doesn't it? Seriously, seriously, bro. For some it's, reason. It sure does, yeah. For some sure. reason. And today we're going to be talking about setting up a call center with virtual people like virtual ISAs and in-house. So combination, just to give you the option of whichever route you want to take, but I've built a few of these. One I've built here locally for me, for our team. And then I used to work very closely with one of the largest call centers in the nation for realtor.com. So, oh, wow. so go. I got to see everything firsthand. I got to see how they train people. I got to see the calls they were making. Pavel, they originally helped me build lab code agents. Oh, wow. There from the go. call center. So from the that call was, centers, yeah. That was very fun what they helped us do. So I was very privy to that. So let, let's get started. The, sure. the, very, the very first thing I always ask is when you're looking to build a call center, whether it's just one person, mm -hmm. right, one ISA or one OSA, uh, I, I need you to think about why you're going to bring somebody in, right? And mm -hmm. good morning, everybody. Yes. Morning. So is it going to be somebody that's going to be making outbound calls specifically to let's just say in real estate expires for sale by owners, just making calls in that way that are cold? Is it going to be more of a warm call or somebody who's calling your database? If you've got a lot of people on your database, right? If you've exported everybody from your phone into a CRM, are they going to be calling those people, right? Or are they going to be calling incoming leads from different sources, right? From Google, from Facebook, Instagram, what are they going to be doing? I think that's that's number one, Pavel. And you have, Pavel, you have a few people making calls for you. I, I do, mean, yeah. You've do. got a really cool sales floor. Their, their target, their target audience, their demographic, are people typically coming in from either referrals, like let's say they come to me and I send them over to you, right? That's number one. Yeah. They're coming in from Facebook and Google and directly from the website, right? But yes, we have actually all kinds of, uh, you know, people that are coming into us, either referrals, like somebody like you. Uh, we have, uh, you know, people coming in from Google a lot and uh, also from Facebook leads. We also have a database of, um, you know, of people we've ever came in contact with. Um, so that's like we reaching out to them. That's out okay. calling, uh, not exactly inbound, but um let's say we went to a convention or expo and we spoke with a bunch of people who gave us their business cards. So obviously we're going to be reaching out to these people uh, at some time, you know, sometimes we don't get a hold of them. So they're going to be put in the CRM and, and there is a process created of how often you should contact them. It's basically like buy or die kind of a thing, you know, you know, you know, but that's what we do. But we have a virtual call center where we have people both in the Philippines and in the United States. No, oh, I love that, dude. All right. So that that's very key. So here's the other part, because I, I saw this on Realtor.com where they had hundreds of people calling from Westlake Village, California and Phoenix, Arizona. That's where their main call centers are. They had to calculate, well, how many actual people do I need calling? Right. I, it's, it's okay to start with one and say, okay, let's start gotcha. to create some processes and systems. Mm -hmm. But if you're a bigger team organization, if you're going to be recruiting, if you're going to be already scaling, you've got a whole bunch of people in your database, it might be a good idea to start with more than just one. And I think that's where you have to start calculating. How does this look? Right. Am I let, let's think about how many people are we going to reach in an hour? Right. So now you're thinking. Number one was who they're going to be calling. Number two is how many do I need, right? Think That's about correct. that. Yeah. And then yeah. number three, do I need do I need technology for this, right? What dialer am I going to use? Because if I don't have a dialer, if I just have a phone. That's going to be very slow. <laughs> I mean, you're probably going to need more than one person at that point. But if you have yeah. somebody with a dialer, 
Like for instance, I just visited Rocket Mortgage in Detroit, right? And one of the things that they use is a company called Five Nine. Yeah, I'm well and familiar with the with this company. Yeah, that is that is a massive, amazing dialer. It right? is. Yeah. And so, depending on where you want to go, I mean, Pablo, you also have something called Timbal, right? That, yeah, it's a, it's a dialer. It's a that that dialer platform. Uh, yeah, we, we use it. Uh, we use it here internally, and uh, we also sometimes offer it to uh, clients of Virtual Desk if they don't have a dialer. If somebody comes to us and let's say they don't have Mojo, uh, we offer Timbal as it's actually uh, less expensive than Mojo. So it also has the three line uh, feature right now. So we offer that as a as a as a perk. Uh -huh. uh, yeah. yeah. So here uh, you go. Technology, yeah, big one. Yeah. Technology is big. And I think oh, yeah. of you've, course. Got to, you've got to put in number four, which is the systems and processes. So oh, yeah. here's where you have to identify and say, okay, I hired, let's just start with the simplest one, Pavel. I hired one person. Mm -hmm. They're going to be, they're going to be reaching out to my database, right? Because I, I personally for real estate, I've got a hundred thousand people in our database. So theoretically I, I need way more than one person, but let's just say I hired one person. For this yeah. now they're going to be using technology to dial right we have a we have a lot of different dialers that we use and now i need to let them know hey this is how we typically have our processes run for those people that are making calls number one here's our script right mm -hmm. now internalize it so you don't sound like a robot right practice number one number two when you reach them make sure that you're calling nobody picks up hang up and call again and then if nobody picks up, then leave a voicemail, then text, and then email. Text, email, right? yep. And then make sure that if you don't reach them at that point, put it in the notes and set up a follow-up time for a much later time. Make sure that they have everything set in place inside of our CRM and database. Make sure that, what I mean by that is make sure that they have a property drip set in place. Make sure that if they are visiting our website more often than not, then you probably want to reach out to them more than you would somebody who hasn't come in for a year, right? So good CRM is the, is the key here. And we, we are actually using full law boss for our company as a CRM and we're loving it because it allows you to record the calls. You can, you can check. And, and if you have uh, what, what we have at virtual desk, we have a team, a sales team, and we have a sales manager who's also responsible uh, you know, he can review the calls, he can review the recordings, he can see the stats, basically keep the team members accountable to how many calls they make and how many uh, people they re reach out to. Yeah. So you got to have some systems in place for that. I like that. And then you have an aspect, you know, you have something you wanted to share that your team made, sure. that Richard S made. I want to take a look at that because it kind of outlines exactly what the process is that you need to delegate here, like the tasks. Yeah. In the duty. Yeah. That's where I think we, we lose sight of what we're supposed to be letting them know. Here we go. Yeah. So you can see my screen, right? Yep. I got you. Yeah. So uh, general tasks uh, as far as out, outbound calling uh, and appointment setting. That's pretty much the goal of the ISA. When they reach out to your prospects, they need to set an appointment. Uh, also, uh, lead generation and nurturing so they can generate leads through marketing campaigns such as like social media. Uh, Google ads, uh, email campaigns, and sometimes when we send out the newsletter and people reach out to us from those newsletters, this is basically also hot contacts. So the sales team should engage them right away. Uh, client relationship management, which is a CRM. You got you to gotta have a nice CRM that's already discussed. Uh, we are using follow-up bots and loving it. So far, that's the best probably and the simplest CRM we've ever encountered. So Wholeheartedly, wholeheartedly endorse the men's support. And uh, we're not sponsors there and they're not sponsoring us, but we're happy users of Follow Up Boss. Uh, data management, uh, data management, uh, obviously you need, you need to update your contacts. Sometimes people move, sometimes people, uh, you know, change change jobs, change phone numbers. So, so make sure it's actually being updated constantly, uh, you know, and customer service. Yeah. You know, assist with leads and their concerns and inquiries uh, because call centers can be either like, uh, you know, outbound calling, inbound or customer service answering. Uh, if, if you're not, a, let's say a real estate company, if you're like tech company or anything else, you need to 
have a customer service so that people can actually call you with their concerns about the product. So uh, that's also part of the call center. Uh, Bubble, on that, uh, on the database, I'm going to go back to the, yeah. the one up there. The database, I think that's where everybody can start because I think what people what people assume is that, well, I don't need somebody calling for me, right? Yeah. But here, here's what happens if you're, if you're in growth mode, right? Your, your ability to be able to follow up with your database, the ones that are kind of like not serious or in between, but those are going to fall off the track. And your ability to be able to follow up with them is going to lessen over the years because you're going to be focusing on those people that are ready now, right? And, and our success has come through having a caller, having actually a few people reach out to our database. That's been the key for our continued growth over the years. 100%, 100% agree with you, man. A database that's, I mean, not a lot of people realize, but they basically have a pot of gold in their cell phone, the contacts that, uh, you know, they can they can just import them and, and start, start working those contacts because um, a lot of those contacts, we've never reached out, we've never talked to them, we've never uh, touched them sometimes in four years. I went through my phone uh, recently and I saw a bunch of people I went to law school with like 10 years ago. It's like, who are the people, you know? <laughs> you know, those are the best clients, man. I've closed them. Yeah. <laughs> I think from my, from my class, from my law school class, I closed like four out of the 15 that were in there. I was like- There you go, yeah. Yeah. Those are the best clients, exactly, you know? Oh, man. All right. Continue. I'm sorry. Just yeah. had to no that. worries. No, no worries. Yeah. So lead prospecting basically established the contacts and quality of leads. Uh, sometimes with all this screening, let's say you went to an event and let's say for real estate, you had a client appreciation event or some sort of a, you know, barbecue cookout, 4th of July, barbecue cookout, invited clients and their friends and somebody showed up with, uh, you know, people you don't know, but you get to know them. You exchange contacts first thing you know update those contacts in your in your uh the database start reaching out to them with uh you know either either you can uh you know basically just check to check with them and yeah. or uh see what they, if they have any real estate needs or basically see what their thoughts about the current market conditions and just engage in the conversations so that's lead prospecting they're not exactly you know, hot contacts that's going to be buying right now, we're ready to engage, but they're basically going to be in the pipeline down the road because people change jobs, move all the time. So um, also uh, very important to, you know, um, you know, to get rid of the non-converted leads uh, because let's say we have leads who have been dead for a while and they're pretty much sitting there and sometimes people don't want to be contacted. Yeah. Uh, we just purge those. We don't, we don't bother with them. You know, if somebody says, don't call me anymore, we're going to respect that. And we, we, we're not going to call those people anymore. Um, also another aspect is, uh, virtual sales support is, uh, if you're at say sales company, it doesn't matter if it's real estate or something else, you, you're selling widgets, uh, you gotta have the virtual sales support so people can actually call and, uh, and your, you know, salespeople can, reach out. That's what we have at Virtudesk. We have a virtual sales team where we have uh, people in the Philippines. Yeah. And we have people in the United States um, reaching out to uh, to leads and to customers. So if you call uh, Virtudesk right now, you know, at this number 1-800-470-8136, you may get somebody in the United States or you may get somebody in the Philippines. And they're equally um, skillful and um, you probably won't know the difference who you're speaking with. That's very true. Yeah, that's very true. I think that's a that's a big misconception that why would we get somebody from outside of, of the country that that can't really understand our culture or maybe doesn't speak proper English, right? I think that's a big big stereotype too. Yeah, and major Fortune 500 companies actually outsource in the Philippines. Um, I've been to several cities in the Philippines where they're like hubs for outsourcing, like Chase, American Express. I saw call centers of Capital One. I saw call centers of uh, Xfinity. So people who are working there are very well skilled and, um, you know, 
and, and, and something to think about if those big companies actually doing it something, I mean, they're doing something right probably because it's been yeah. working for them and they don't have virtual call centers. They actually have a huge buildings there full of different departments. And that's what they do because they, those departments, you know, those call centers serve pretty much the whole U.S. and Canada. So something to keep in mind. I, I look, I've had somebody calling our database for since 2013 because we started growing super fast online. Mm -hmm. and I had nobody calling our database. They were just falling through the cracks, right? And that was before I could retarget them on Facebook and Instagram. So now we do we do a combination of both. So uh, what, what do you've got right there for lead tracking and reporting? All right, lead tracking and reporting, track and make a daily report on the number of calls, conversations, appointments made. So so we actually doing through follow up boss. That's what that's, that actually allows us to uh, keep track of, um, you know, of what the sales agents are doing, you know, uh, because that's accountability. And um, Elias, our sales manager, he's actually, uh, you know, checks that and has one-on-one uh, -on -one sessions with, uh, with the sales agents regarding that. That gives them accountability. And uh, we have, uh, you know, we also have a, basically with us, we suggest make weekly and monthly report and lead generations and conversions to measure the success rate of every ISA and follow-up efforts. So, um, you know, if, and, and, and that's like, uh, that's actually a twofold, uh, you know, tool because you, first of all, you measure your ROI on uh, how many leads it takes to convert uh, and also in how many follow-ups it takes to convert. And also that's accountability for your ISA or your sales agent on the phone. Uh, because if you have a team of sales agents, you'll say you have a five, 10, uh, you are meeting with everybody and you see which one is performing well, which one is not, which one needs more uh, up training, may maybe needs some coaching or uh, just this person just needs to go. So well, that's, you know. I have a question on that, Paul, yeah. because like one of our friends, um, he just actually texted me in between this. His name's uh, Bill Kerbox. Mm -hmm. He said he's he's just, he says, just signing up on the for Virtue Desk. Um, oh. Thank you for giving me the thumbs up. Right. He All just right. Did that right now. And so he's hiring it for video editing. But when it comes to really anything, when it comes to virtue desk and outsourcing, I think the thing that people forget is that you're continually training these people. So not only am I training my ISAs because I have to, because I, I we all do business differently. Right. So, of course, I yeah. have to indoctrinate them into how we do business. But you set up the basics. Right. So you say, oh, yeah. hey, guys. Here are the scripts to use. Hey, everyone, here, here's the tech we're going to train you on. And then it's up to us to do the rest. And I think there's a there's sometimes a fall in between that process. And sometimes that blame go that blame goes back to virtue desk, right? Mm -hmm. When the blame really belongs to the person hiring the the agency. Oh. What, do, what do you have what do you see on that side? Well, and here's the thing, a uh, good example, yes, uh, we had a, somebody who was not really happy with what his ISA was doing. So I personally dug into this and wanted to find out what's going on. I said, listen, dude, what are you not happy with? And he said, I want my ISA to make 50 calls an hour. I said, okay, what do you specifically want him to do? So like, I want him, you know, 50 calls an hour. I said, listen, your ISA is scheduling appointments, making less calls than 50 but scheduling appointments is like, no, but my, but the numbers have to be 50. I said, well, do you realize this is basically 50 calls an hour, uh, an hour. That's a little bit over a minute per call would be how meaningful conversation, how, how can somebody have a meaningful conversation with somebody to schedule an appointment? <laughs> what if you have a 15 minute phone call with somebody, which is very, you know, quality phone call, you know, but uh, you know, you get an appointment out of it. So, but you only left with a, 45 minutes left to make other, uh, you know, 49 calls. It's not going to be possible. No way, man. Yeah. And, yeah. Did, and did you even ask him what tech he was using too, that he wants? Uh, he got um, Vulcan 7. He got Vulcan 7. And, uh, but the thing is like, I said, okay, let me ask you a question. Did you ever make those calls yourself? He's like, no, I've never done cold calling. <laughs> 
I was like, I can, I can see. I said, where'd you get the 50 calls per, uh, per hour? It's like I've read on the internet that a good sales agent what? make 50 calls an hour. So I said, so you've never done it before. You've read on the internet that it has to be 50 calls, but what do you, what do you need? Do you need calls to be made? Do you need somebody just to burn through your database or you need somebody yeah. to actually fish out some good stuff out of your database? <laughs> you know? So, and the realization just came to this person. I was like, oh yeah, you're right. You know? So. <laughs> yeah. That's a problem. And I think that goes along with the training because uh, yeah. that when that falls on me, of course, like if I'm training them, I've done the calls. I still do the calls, but if it's something I don't know, I'm going to rely on your training. Right. Yeah, and and that's the thing. And this guy was blaming us that he said, "What I need, I need fifty calls uh, per uh, per uh, per hour." Yeah, like, which dude, we training them to actually make an appointment for you. <laughs> you know what I mean? Well, look, I, I think that that's the challenge right there because yeah. the the continuation of the numbers that I had was number five was hiring and training. Right? Yeah. If we're gonna go through a company that's overseas, right? like yours, which is in Washington state, but you know, you outsource to the Philippines. Yeah. That's definitely going to be a lot less and you do train them for us. Right. Exactly. Now, if we do in-house, that's going to cost me probably minimum around 50,000 plus bonuses on, yeah. on an ISA. Right. And there's nothing wrong with that. Cause we still have a combo. I think the, the, the key is combining it. Mm -hmm. If you're just starting off, like when I first started off, my first hire was a, a virtual assistant, right? And then I scaled up from there. But I think the hiring and the training is key because then, then we've got to talk about culture. And if you're bringing up something like that, Pavel, right now, with somebody who's already trying to set expectations that are not realistic, what kind of culture are they really creating? Well, How's that culture there? It's not a culture, man. And it's not, I mean, this person, I mean, the, the ISA, um she's just going to burn out she's gonna be demotivated and when this person is demotivated you know the quality of the of the production will just go down you know and yeah sometimes people don't realize that and uh that's okay you know um we 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 understand that and we're here to educate and a lot of our work is actually done to uh to educate um you know newer entrepreneurs or uh agents who've never uh done it before uh, as far as what what it actually entails, you know. So, yeah, yeah. Dude, I, I think it's a I think it's a challenge here. We, we've got about four minutes, but I wanted to talk about the the culture and and really helping out the, the ISAs, the OSAs. If you've never called, right, and you're listening to this, I don't think you truly. If you've never called for a living, right, then you don't really didn't, didn't dial for dollars. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I don't think you understand how hard this is. I come from a telemarketing background, so I did it for years. And so anytime I hire any caller, I let them know, hey, look, take a break anytime you want, right? And yeah. I'm looking for quality over quantity, right? If I have somebody make 10 calls in a day and they lock in five appointments, but I have somebody make 300 dials and makes one, I mean, come on. Yeah, exactly. You need to you need to look at the ROI, you know. Yeah, and I think the the longevity of this position. I think we forget that it's a hard position, and if you don't treat these people right and give them enough breaks and have the right expectations, you're going to lose them, because it's already a hard enough job being rejected, oh, yeah. right? So, when you're hiring, right, make sure that there is at least some experience calling so that nobody coming in doesn't know what it means to call consistently throughout the day. Right? Yeah. They may not be, they may not uh, know real estate that much, but at least as, if, as far as they know how to uh, make the dials and speak with the prospects, cold prospects, that's value right there. That is. I, I agree. I mean, my first hire was an ISA and she was, she came to me from a banking industry, which, you know, Oh, whoa. Yeah. You know her very well. <laughs> she was yeah. my first ISA. And when I was selling real estate, she was scheduling three, four appointments, listing appointments per day. Wow, dude. On, a, on, a, on an eight-hour shift, uh, three, four appointments, but she was not making probably more than, I'd say, like 80 to 100 calls per day. You wow. know. But again, that's ROI right there. I could have told her, okay, listen, why don't you start dialing 
500 calls, uh, you know, a day, that will be, that would not be even productive. I needed appointments. I don't, I didn't care about number of dials. And a lot of agents I see, they care about number of dials because they, they got this in their head that uh, were created the culture, I guess, that to burn through as many phone numbers as possible. Yeah. You know, like the, the phone page, the, the, the yellow pages, but it's not what it is. It's supposed to be, you're supposed to get quality appointments. That's the key, man. And that's what I want at the end right here. I want people to focus on quality. When you're hiring an ISA, an OSA, a dialer, a caller, somebody who's just going to nurture your database, make sure that you're going oh, quality over quantity, right? Make sure exactly. that, that the person you hire is going to be there to build these relationships because this is where what's going to allow you to grow your business. And I think Pavel's team at Virtudes does a great job. I, I currently have three virtual assistants there. And Pavel, uh, in closing here, if I wanted to hire an, a, a virtual assistant that does the ISA work, let's just say ISA calling my database. Yeah. Would that be an executive admin or would that be a regular admin? Uh, that'll be um, ISA. We have special, you know, we have ISA. It's called voice account. Okay. It's not an ex uh, EVA, it's ISA. And uh, if, if you go to the, our w w website, myvirtuedesk.com, you'll see the pricing specifically for uh, GVA, which is an admin. You can, you'll see ISA and you'll see EVA. So this is in between. This Perfect. Is people specifically trained for inside sales, uh, inside sales. I like that, man, because it's a whole different beast. It is. It is. And we hired people with a different mentality, with a different mindset who come from a, a call calling industry or just a, a call center industry. So they know they know the game. Pablo, that that outline that you had with the tasks and the duties, can yeah. you send that over to me? Uh, yeah, I can sh sh shoot it over so you can share it in the, in the community. Yeah. I'm going to put it into leverage. And everybody that joined, thank you so much. If you have any questions, you can always reach out to Pavel to me, or just go directly to myvirtuedesk.com. Thanks, Pavel. Sounds good. Thank you, brother. Thanks, Have a good everybody. Run. All right.